Hello and thank you very much for joining me on Angie B Crafts. So today I'm going to do some demonstrating of resin. Now this is something which is relatively new to me. This is my latest make which I am rather pleased with and it's out of a Stamperia mould using clear epoxy resin and mica powders. So this is the mould it's out of which has got is the Sir Vagabond mould by Stamperia and I just thought it would be nice to do a couple of the other pieces in here um, and show you guys what it is I do. So I'm going to pop this to one side and get started. So the last thing you need for this really is the mould. First of all you need your resin. So the resin that I'm using at the minute is craft resin and it's a two-part resin as most is. Um, this is the second type of resin that I've used. I can't actually recall the name of the first type, but this one comes very simply in an A and a B, and it's equal volume. So some are equal weights, some are equal volume. So just check your instructions. If it's by weight, you may have a difference in volume because one might be slightly denser than the other. So just check with any that you do, whether it's by weight or by volume. Now I've got these silicone cups that I've been using. As you can see, they've still got bits of resin in them. And I do clean out the vast majority, but these little bits, because I know that I color my resin, I don't worry too much about it because they so far haven't shown up in a way that I don't like. So I've got different size cups. I've got some of the, t the 100 mil cups, which are these little ones. They're nice and flexible, which is really good for when you're pouring because you can be very, very accurate with your pouring. These ones, the lines aren't marked on terribly well. I have done some marking just with a, a Sharpie pen on this, um, but again, it doesn't show up terribly well. So I tend to mix in the big one, which is a 250 mil, and then pour into the small ones to color. Although as you can see, I have colored in the big one as well. So to start off with, what I would say is, well, gloves, wear gloves. Do not do this without gloves. It is horrible if you do it without gloves. You can't wash it off your hands. Soap doesn't get it off. It just takes time. It's awful stuff. So just make sure that you wear your gloves. So I'm taking my 250 mil. I'm going to make about 100 mil of resin this time. So I'm going to go up to 50 with A and then up to 100 with B. So these come with an internal seal in them. So you just need to pop that out. You don't need to do any prep of what's in here, you just pour. So I'm just going to be quiet for a second while I pour this and measure it out. And we get to 50 mil. And what I would say is get to eye level. I've actually gone closer to 60 there, which means I'm making a bit more. So rather than pour it back in, the lid's gone inside, is I tend to just match it. So I'm just going to give this a wipe. As it is, this is the resin and as it is this does not um, stick to itself. So even if you don't clear off the edges it's fine. Now this is going to be troublesome to get back on because the other lid, there we go, was stuck inside. So you just need to make sure the other lid's on. Now what I would say is always, always, always do one put the lid back on it and then do the other because if you actually put lid A on lid B and there's bits around the edges that's going to set and you're going to end up with it stuck together and you're not going to be able to use it again. All right so on this one so I need to remember I've done 60 on that by mistake. This one's a lot more runny so the hardener is more runny than the resin itself. There we go. So it comes out a little bit faster. And again, I'm not worried about on my raggy if the two mix, if they harden on my raggy, that's fine. Got plenty of them. Pop the lid back on. And that is the first part done. So now comes the bit where you get a sore arm. And basically you have to stir this for three minutes. Read the instructions on whichever resin you get. Each resin has a different sum is one minute, then a break, then one minute. This one is just three minutes of constant stirring. And you do tend to get a tired arm. If you stir it really, really fast, you tend to get more bubbles um, and they tend to be the smaller bubbles. So I just tend to keep stirring at a rate that I'm comfortable with. If you do it too fast, you'll not keep going. So I'll do this and then I will come back to you when I'm pouring it into the other cups. 
So here it is all stirred up. Now you can see in there I've got some of the other bits that were stuck on the side have broken off and gone into it and I'm not worried about that at all because as I say I'm colouring this. But I don't know if you can see it or not but some of the bubbles just rise to the surface and pop. You're just trying to get that so it's visible. I'm not sure if you managed to see that or not, but they do rise to the top. But as you pour, they tend to put to come out as well. So the other thing that we're going to look at now is what do I colour it with? Today I'm going to show you how to colour it just with mica powders. So this is my box of Arteza mica powders. It's a really good buy this. 60 different tubs of mica powders. And in here somewhere, which I can never find, is a little spoon. There it is. <laughs> a little, you get it with a little spoon. So this one, I think I'm going to go brighter colours. I've not really done bright colours in this. Oh, a nice purple. So that's amethyst purple and a little bit of bright blue, I think. I um, wonder if we've got... Oh, we do. A bronze. Yeah, they'll do. So that's what I'm going to colour them with. <clears throat> so to colour, you well this is what I do, I literally just pop a little spoonful of mica powder in, like that. And I'll just clean that off, just wiping it on my pinny to get rid of what's left so that I can dunk it into the next colour. Now some of these I haven't used yet, so it's, some of them I may have to open as we use them. That was good heat. So I've not got any magic measurements for how much to put in this. I just guess. If I don't like the colour as I've stirred in the clear, then I can add some more. And then on each of these I'm going to add a teeny, teeny bit of the bronze. So just a tiny bit, I don't know if you can see that, it's about a quarter of a tea, of a mini spoon. Now this spoon holds 0.2 grams of mica, so it's a tiny, tiny little amount. I can't remember how much is in each of these. These are five gram bottles, so if you're using 0.2 grams a time, they're going to last you a good while. Okay, so we're going to do roughly 50-50. Just going to pour out of this one straight in. You can see all the bits coming through. As I say, I've not disliked the effect of having the bits in, so I'm really not worried about them. I quite like having it actually. Right, so I'm going to leave a little bit in there with my big spatula. And then I have these little stirring sticks. Now I am waiting for some plastic ones that are reusable. These ones aren't reusable because they're wooden, um, but they're really good for actually stirring the mixture up. So if you just watch as it changes colour, it's such a lovely, lovely thing as it changes the colours, the mica powder goes through. You can see the blue starting to rise to the top now. And then suddenly you get this glorious glorious colour. It's just beautiful. I mean look at that. The shimmer in there. It's phenomenal. So there's one stirred up. I think it's going to be interesting with the black bits. You never know this might be the one that I don't like but we will find out. So stirring up the other one using a different stick so as not to cross contaminate the colours. So this one's purple with a hint of bronze. Oh, you can see it just suddenly starting to come to the top. I love the way it suddenly rises up. <laughs> There's the luscious colour coming through. Fabulous. Now with mica powders you can add alcohol inks to them. Um, I haven't got, oh, well, I've not done that on this video obviously, I'm using the mica on this one, but you can use them with alcohol inks. You could also use them with um, resin tints. There's a few companies out there. Look how luscious that goes. Gorgeous. Um, there's quite a few companies out there that do resin tints. So if that's the way you want to go, then do that. I don't use the resin tints. 
I'm sticking with my mica and my alcohol inks just at the moment. In time I may change my mind, who knows? Right, so what I'm going to start with is actually the words. Um, now with these, one thing I, I'm not keen on with the Stamperia moulds is that there's fatter bits and then thinner bits away so you kind of need to support it. So I'm going to start off doing that and to do that what I've discovered works relatively well. I just get paint brushes and pop them underneath just to raise it up. And you don't have this as much with the silicone moulds but with the Stamperia moulds it seems to be the way they are. I've got a couple of these and the same things happened but it's particularly true with this one because of the depth of this and the depth of the man. So just be aware of that. You want to keep it as flat as possible so that it doesn't be thicker at one end than the other. But one thing to bear in mind is you don't actually have to fill the whole of your mould. You don't have to have it as deep as the whole mould is what I'm saying. Obviously it will fill the whole mould because it's liquid and it's going to flow. But you don't have to have it right to the rim. Now what I'm doing now is just on these little bits the resin may not necessarily flow as freely because it's quite thick, it's quite viscous. So if it doesn't flow as freely it's not going to sit as well in the gaps and then I'm just going over the letters a little bit and you can see it's still quite translucent so I am going to go a little bit thicker now and just add more in just to reduce that translucency and make it more opaque to make it so that you can't see through it quite as easily. So these bits, if you don't get into these bits you'll find that's where you get bubbles and you want to try and avoid bubbles. So you just want to make sure that the resin goes right into all the little bits. Okay, so that's that one. And then I'm going to get the purple. And with the purple, I'm going to pour that in the mould above. Whee. I love this purple. It reminds me of anyone who's from the UK and aged back my age, which is in the 50s, um, who remembers the mini metros. And there used to be a mini metro that was this colour, so it's purple in one light and then changed to blue in another light. And that's what this colour reminds me of. It's the colour of a mini metro. They were very trendy in the 90s. So I'm just having a little bit of a, a poke about to make sure that I'm not going to get well, I'm going to reduce the amount of bubbles. There's no guarantee with this. It is just do your best and hope. Now with these, you will see some people say, heat up your moulds, because it heat up your resin because it makes all the bubbles pop, which is fantastic. It may well work. But if you're using a plastic mould, the plastic melts. So don't heat up this mould. Whatever you do, don't heat up this mould. I'm wanting that lifted slightly more. Mm -mm. There we go. I'm happy with the flow of that now. Let's see if it'll flow more. So I'm just negotiating the position of it so that I'm getting it as flat as possible. That's all I'm doing. So your paintbrushes are your friend. On this one, you'll see it's now lifted up. So I'm going to have to support under there. I'm just going to use more paintbrushes. Now this is just the system I've come up with. I'm sure if you put cloths underneath or something like that, you will actually get just as much of an effect. But for me, this system makes sense. I'll pop that one under. So that one's supported. There we go. I'm liking it. Ignore the fact that one's underneath. I'm not going to unnecessarily nudge things. Right. So now I'm going to use the blue and the purple in the same mould. I'm going to start off, you can have a blue head and then I'm going to stop there. I 
quite like purple suits on people. So I'm hoping that this is going to give us some purple to his trousers, to his lower half. So that it's going to look a little bit of a dapper chappy. So these are part of the Sir Vagabond collection. It's the only part that I've got of that collection. Much as I love the papers, what I've discovered, and this is something I never thought that I would discover, is that if I buy paper packs, I don't use them because I like to make my own papers. So I, I either use paints or use um, gel plates or inks, uh, distress inks, distress oxides, and make my own papers. You can see I'm just swirling this. Bear in mind, what you see on the back isn't the same as what you see on the front. So there's a little bit of unpredictability in this. So I'm trying to get the purple and the blue to mix, but it could be that the only part of him that ends up looking purple are his feet. We just have to wait and see. I'm just gonna to top it up a little bit more. If you have a piece that has um, something like this sticking up, this is obviously the gap for putting his arm in. Now, if there's a layer of, um, resin on there which there is on here what you'll find once it's set is that there's a very clear layer a very thin layer sorry not clear very thin layer don't panic if that happens because all you need to do is get your craft knife and just chop it out and it comes out really really easily it's very very delicate so it's not going to be troublesome to get it out so don't panic if you do manage to get some over so i'm just topping this up a little bit more now once these have been filled, they take 24 hours. So what we have to do once we've filled them all is walk away from it. And that's one of the hardest things to do. What I love about most of the molds I've got is they have lots of little bits on as well. So I've got loads of extra resin here. So I can just fill up all these little molds and I end up getting lots of cogs in different colours, but they're in keeping with the piece that the main pieces I've made, so it means that they're usable. Another thing that you can do with these is you can actually put mica into the moulds before you pour. In fact, I'll do that on some of the smaller ones, on some of these, these two smaller ones. I'll put the mica in first, and you can see how that looks. So with these again I'm just stirring into it just to make sure that we're reducing the risk of any bubbles because we do have lots of opportunity for bubbles to be there. Do not be tempted by a heat gun. You'll see, I don't know if you can see actually but there's there's lots of bubbles just come into the surface of the own accord. So all this is doing is just making sure that it gets right into all the edges. Make sure everything is filled. Do, do, do. I do love this mould. I've got the other one that's the same as this set, but that, that's it on the, the Vagabond stuff. I haven't got any of the other Sir Vagabond or any of the Lady Vagabond. Oh, I said I was going to do the... Uh, mica into it. Right, to do the mica into it I'm just going to take my gloves off and I'm just going to use the bronze and a paintbrush and it's as simple as that. So just get a little paintbrush, put some mica on and then just dab it over. So you put as much or as little as you want and it just gives a little added layer of colour onto your piece. Just clean off the bits I've just sprinkled all over here. And don't worry about your moulds getting bits spilt on them, they, they do clean off quite easily. So it's not a panic. Right, just want to put a little bit more in that one, I think. That's better. 
they do have a bit of static on them as well I don't know if you saw then there was quite a lot of dance so just be aware of that there is going to be static on your mold I always put my lid back on mica powders because I know my ability to make a mess is second to none right so putting my gloves back on I'm purposely not actually hooking over the edge because I don't want it on my skin if I can avoid it there we go mucky gloves back on and don't worry if you put mica in and then don't end up having enough to pour into that one it doesn't matter the mica will just wash off so don't panic now these colours are not colours I've used in this before so I have no clue whether they're going to look good bad or indifferent and that's another one of the things that I really enjoy about this is it's it's playtime it really is a chance to just see what you can come up with now we do have some left in this so I'm going to add onto this so this is my other Sir Vagabond so this is going to be interesting I'm going to add some on I think I might just mix a bit more because we've still got some left in the other pot get a bit of the blue I hope blue and purple so vagabond looks good can't do anything about it if it doesn't well you can actually you can paint them up so it's not a problem you can use on these you can use spray paints you can use your acrylics you may find that you need to use uh, gesso to get a good key to get some of your colors to stick um, but just play about with what you can add onto them right I'm going to put bronze in now into what is left of this oh, I've picked it up without changing out my gloves sugar butties that's what not to do But will not panic. Put our lid back on. See, it gets sticky. And then I need to give this a little bit of a mix in. There's not a lot left, but there's hopefully enough to do our different man. I love how rich that goes. Look at that colour. Oh, that's a really nice look there. You can see it. It's fabulous. Fabuloso. Right, let's pour this in and see how much we get in. So he's going to have a very funny coloured face because it's going to be purple and blue. But that doesn't matter. Now, I said about if you get bits like this that stick up, don't worry about it. They will, they're meant to. You sometimes get some higher bits, but they're not as high as the outside level. Those bits you want to cover. They are forming part of your piece. So make sure you cover them. There we go. Right, we're getting a nice thick layer there. And I'm just doing the digging in, just making sure that everything is now I'm going to give this a swirl around because I know I've got that blue and purple underneath but I kind of want them to mix in with the bronze that just looks like toffee doesn't it if you saw any of my Facebook or Instagram posts this week you'll have seen that I put on a little teaser for the, the one that was came out of this mould and there were lots of people who said is it honeycomb, is it toffee there was lots of food brandy snaps was another one so I'm just using this to stir it up. I just love the back of them, to be honest. I think they look absolutely stunning. But the front's even better when they come out. So we're going to have some darker patches and some lighter patches on this. Now I've still got, we've got some little drops on here that have come just from the um, mica dripping in it. And that's fine. I am not remotely worried about them. Now, I'm going to get another mould right so I'm working in quite a small space here because I'm not wanting to move this just to finish off pouring this last little bit so I've got some more cogs and things in this mold this mold is the other 
um, Stamperia mould that I own. I'm not sure if this is part of the Savagabond or if this is just one of their really cool moulds, I couldn't tell you. So we've got some teeny tiny little bolts, nuts and bolts. So we only need a teeny tiny little bit. It's amazing how small an amount you can need for some things. And what I would say is, and I'm learning this as I go, is trial and error will help you learn how much you need to make up at a given time but don't ever worry if you've got too much because you just add it into other moulds just have a few around you that you can add into right so as I say these take up to 24 hours to set um, so just bear that in mind when you're doing this isn't an immediate process this is going to take time to set if you use other resin products I'm just going to dip some out of that there's way too much in it um, if you use other resin products they set at different rates so just check what the rate of setting is for the product you're using um, this is epoxy resin so this is the clear epoxy resin you can get other resins that set within an hour um, but I've just not got those, I've, I've only got the epoxy. I'm sure the other ones will come into my stash at some point in the not too distant future. You'll see here I've got quite a few little bits hanging over the sides. Again, once it's set they just chop off with a pair of scissors so I'm not at all worried about it. I'm a little bit uneven at this end <clears throat> so I'm just going to get some other brushes and just support that so that it's not uneven. And there we have the port. So I will come back to you once these are all set and we'll do the demold together. So here is the day after. Now you'll look here and you'll see we had a bit of an incident. We lost some as I was moving it from my craft room onto the windowsill where I let these things set and it came out but you can see how easily that's peeling off and you can still see the overall shape so I'm not overly worried about it because you can just pad it up if you're going to put it on a project I don't know if you can tell it's fuller at the bottom than it is up at the top again that doesn't bother me because I'm going to be putting these on projects I'm going to flip them over and just show them show you how they look in the mold so that's what you see in the mold okay so that's all the bits you couldn't see when it was the other way up. And these ones have all turned out okay as well. So let's look at a bit of demolding. Now what I've found with these is that if you have them, if you try and do it this way, you can do it, but it's actually quite troublesome. What I found is if you kind of pull away from the edges you can hear it crack as it comes away and the same on the other side pressing downwards on the mold it's slightly easier to get it out of the mold okay so that is what we're going to do for each of these right so here is our first man I actually really like the fact that he's got that blue and purple it makes him look a bit eerie but if you're not happy with the colours it doesn't matter because it's really simple to just paint over them but I love the fabulous sheen that you get that is purely because of the mica because that's the only colour we put in isn't it right so we're going to do the same with these so I'm pulling across and pushing up with these ones to get them out turn it round get it at a different angle these moulds feel slightly different than using silicon moulds and it takes a while to realise that they do bounce back into shape. At first I was a bit apprehensive. So with this one, if you remember, we put the mica into the base before we poured this. So it's come out like this. Just bring the light a little bit further in. There you go. Well, you can see how shiny that is there, can't you? <laughs> Fabuloso. Right. Let's do one of the word ones. Now I've not used these ones, I've not used any of this mold apart from that. 
so let us I tell a lie there actually I have used a couple of the cogs before but I've not used the words I've not used either of these two you, you feel when it suddenly will is ready to pop out and it just feels it just suddenly goes oh okay then I'll come out there we have this way for adventure doesn't that look brilliant so you can see these tiny little dots these are actually the little bubbles and that's how they look personally I actually quite like them because I think it adds a little bit of texture but if you want it super smooth you just need to be a bit more careful with removing any of the bubbles and um, potentially doing you can do some tapping to release some of the bubbles but in this mold as I showed you when I was filling it because it's different heights it's a bit more difficult so this one you can see here we've got some little bits that are just they've just kind of demolded a bit funny it just means that they were over the edge you can see here there's a little bit over the edge and it just shows but what you can do is just get a nail file and file it off it works absolutely fine if there's any rough edges that you don't like you can just file them off but this one says if I get it the right way up absolutely unique okay right now let's see what we can do with this man see if we like him do, do, do. like I say I spilt a little bit he went a little bit wonky on me while I was moving him which is troublesome so what I'd say to you is if you're going to pour pour where you know you're going to be able to leave it so this is some of the black I showed you the pots weren't quite clean and this is some of the black and there's another few bits again I actually like what that adds I think it adds character you can see here he's a bit paler at the top and a bit more translucent and a bit more opaque at the bottom and that is purely to do with the fact that he's got more resin at the bottom than he has at the top because I spilt him but he's still perfectly usable and I really really like him I'm liking these right so again get these cogs out and just pop them on and then you can see that one's quite inside out but it pops back in beautifully it's not a problem popping them out so don't be afraid of moving your plastic to get your bits out they pop back in fantastically well like I said I was initially a little bit apprehensive with the smaller ones you're just kind of better off pushing them out like that and then pop them back in So I'm using upwards and outwards. So I'm pressing underneath and pulling out at the same time to get the release on all sides. You don't want to just pull at one end and yank because there's a chance you might snap it. I haven't done, but there's a chance you would. So you just want to go across all the sides. Do, do, do. Right, that one's been a bit stubborn there we go I like this one I think this one's really cool I love it so there's all the cogs so again with your cogs I like the fact that these have got the copper on them but I've still got the hint of purple with these ones I would use something like a gilding wax on them or um, some texture paste to add a little bit of grunginess to them before I put them on a project with the words I'm going to grab some gilding wax right so it's my Pebio gilding wax I've had this for donkey's years this is the antique gold one I've had it for so long and there's still absolutely tons left but it lasts forever and I just pop it on give it a rub in the lid just to get the excess off and then I'm just going to come along and rub over the top and you can see that just pops out beautifully so I would say if you're going to do this don't do it all in one go do it add a little bit then add a little bit more and just start to bring that color out 
if you want to add colour along the edges you can do that as well or if you want to just leave it with the writing but you can really I think that looks fabulous love it love it love it love it right I'm going to use in fact I'm going to go for a different colour for the blue just give my finger a bit of a wipe and this one is the Empire Gold so this is a gold goldier gold okay so you can see it's much more classic gold this one always makes me think that it's more a little bit coppery I like that one that's my favorite one right now this one I think we're going to end up with it on the edges because the edges are quite high but we'll see yeah there we go I'll put it on the edges as well this is purely to make it easier for putting on if you don't want to do the edges you just need to be a little bit more careful than I am being but I just think it looks fabulous I love it with the blue I think that looks absolutely brilliant Add a little bit more fab how cool does that look that looks really antiquated doesn't it brilliant love it and again you can add the gilding wax on wherever you want I'm gonna go back to my favorite actually no I'm gonna stick with the gold because I think it's looking kind of cool so I'm gonna pop the gold up on here and onto his hat just to give a little hint of goldiness going on and I am purposely going on to the flat bit it's just picking up little bits of it that looks fab hee <laughs> hee I love it I am very very impressed with this and I think we'd have some gold on his jacket as well and on his lapels and his tie he's a bit of a well-to-do chap oh I love how he's come out brilliant so I think I'd go with another colour on this one now I do have some pretty gets gritty mousses and I'm wondering if they would go well on here right so I have here this is the cosmic shimmer metallic gilding polish and it's in pink and I'm wondering if this this stuff's fab because look at that it's, it's squishy I love it do it into the lid the reason I'm doing it into the lid and not onto my sheet is because if it goes onto your sheet it um, stains it that's what an awful lot of these stains are is off things like this so I'm just adding this on because I think this chap likes a little bit of pink just to bring out a little bit of something quite liking the pink on it so if you're going over it just ever so gently you can build up your layers don't go over it really heavy handed on the first go just take your time I'm going to put my finger over his face because I don't want pink on his face but this is really starting to build up I want a little bit more going down the layers of this and then I'm going to bring it back the other way so it catches if you're finding that the the pattern is going the opposite way just bring your wax back the opposite way as well do, do, do. oh I'm liking that pink on him I don't know if you can see that very well on camera how cool does that look I think that looks rather nice right and then I'm going to pop some of the whipped mousse now the whipped mousse is a bit more delicate in its constitution so what I'm going to do look at this this is so soft what I tend to do with this is pop it onto the back of my hand like that and use it my hand as my palette I tend to do this with anything that's quite soft the others are although this one's wobbly it's quite firm these ones are quite thick but this is quite a soft delicate kind of a paste so 
and we'll pop a little bit of that on his hat. Like I said, I didn't clean my finger properly, we're getting a bit of the pink coming through as well. But you can see, you can actually just colour up using your gilding flakes or using something like the uh, the Pretty Gets Gritty Whip Mousse. Gilding wax, not gilding flakes. Now what you'll find is if you add a heat gun onto any of this, that you will get um, a little bit of increased movement on it. Um, by that I mean it's it's not going to suddenly go all floppy, it will maintain its structure. It just feels softer and gives you a little bit of malleability. The amount that you get from it decreases as you leave it over time. So don't panic if you use a heat gun on it, it can take it. Right, so I put that on and then I'm just rubbing over it and it's it's kind of rubbing some of it away and forcing some of it in. So we're left with a less perfect cog, which is what I want. I don't think cogs are ever perfect. So I like the fact that it gets less perfect. You'll see this dries quite quickly as well. So it's dried on my hand already. So don't put too much out at once. It does tend to dry quite quickly. Okay, so let's do a little quick take a part of the ones out of the other mould just to show you how they've come out. So I did pour a few more after I finished yesterday, just with what was left. And they're not, there we go, not quite as willing to come out of these. Again, the only bit that I've used of this previously was this and this one. So I've not used these screws before. I'm actually really intrigued by, oh wow, that is amazing. Hoping the camera will focus in on that, oops. Isn't that cool? Love that, brilliant. Right, I'm gonna do this bolt. Let's see what the bolts ended up like. Oh, again. That's phenomenal. These are the two moulds as they came, obviously with none of the little extra bits stuck on. Um, and they're just absolutely brilliant. I love them, absolutely love them. And this is what we've made. So these will be going into some projects over the coming weeks and I'm sure that I will be videoing them or at least putting pictures up. So if you haven't got me on other social media, please feel free to add me on Instagram where I'm Angie Mary B um, and on Facebook where I'm Angie B Crafts and you will see what I've made. So you'll see a few of these have got little extra bits like this that are just clear bits that are overhanging and they come off either by picking or just getting a pair of scissors. These are the ones that are hands so they're probably a little bit too big but you'll see it just chops off really easily and it's gone. So yeah, that's it. Please, please do join me on other videos. Um, like this video, put any comments on. If there's anything else that you'd like me to do in resin, let me know and I'll see what I can do. But yeah, keep an eye out for these on some other projects. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.